Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're all well. Welcome back to the another another virtual, another virtual with Andrew and myself. Welcome. Hello. Good to see you. Happy Good Friday. Day. Happy Friday. Yeah. Woof. And uh, it's getting Woof. warm. Yeah. It's it is. Oh, there it? there yeah. it is. There's yeah. the flip. We have to do it. We have to do it. <laughs> You've gone in early. <laughs> yeah. Minimum ten per stream. I think that should be one of the quiz questions tonight. All right. <laughs> all right there we go. Um, hope you're all having a, a wonderful week. Um, this is the October uh, five fizzy flavor virtual. Uh, one of the quiz questions, which isn't in the quiz, should be how many, how can, how well can you say that phrase after five grams? The five fizzy, five, anyway, five fizzy <laughs> flavors quiz night is is um we're having a bit of whiskey tonight. We're having a bit of a chat. Uh, we're gonna Andrew and I are gonna bounce off each other as we always do. Um, make some terrible jokes along the way. Uh, talk a bit about a whiskey and and um and see what comes of it. Uh, we've got one pack to share between us both. They are 30 mil drams. You can share this with a friend at home if you want, if you want to introduce someone to what single cast whiskey is all about. Uh, there's less tastings at the moment uh, around Australia, so it's great to see people jumping in on these um, these virtuals and joining us for a dram. So, Indeed. Yeah. Evening, Darren. Good to see you. Yes, hope everyone's well. I'm, we're going to try and grab as many comments as we can. Uh, Jesse, good to see you. Anyone want drinks tonight? Included. Uh, I've indulged in a touch of Irish. Huh, you may as well, well start somewhere. That's, that's a fantastic thing to start with because everything you're going to taste from now on will be so much better. If you had an American whiskey, you would have said the same thing. It's fine. Well, no, but for different reasons. Yep. Uh, yeah, for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's Irish whiskey. Oh, it's know, lighter, it triple it distilled. It is, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. a yeah. wonderful aperitif whiskey. It's, it's almost like we have we do have some Irish coming up there, don't we? We do indeed. There's that's, a few things and interesting things in the pipeline. That's very exciting. Keep your eyes peeled. You mentioned American whiskey just then. We have some fantastic uh, Scotch Rock Whiskey Society bottlings coming in from the USA. We do. In yeah. the not too distant future. Watch this space. Very exciting. Very exciting. Uh, so tonight the quiz is going to go through as we go through. If you got a pack, we emailed you the link to this quiz already. But I will just also just throw it up on screen so that we all have it. Uh, so there's the link if you want to um, capture the quiz. You don't know what the questions are yet, so that's why we're going to do it as we go. <laughs> but the answers are all there, the answers. The multiple choice are all there if you like. So we'll read out the questions, you pop in the answers, and the first person to submit and get them all right uh, will win a $50 voucher to go towards your November, December outturn if you wish. But I'll have some runner-up prizes. I'll have some drams and some samples to send out for those who uh, also submit a correct answer sheet. So Now, we, we, we didn't plan this, but you said if... For the, for the first person to put all the entries with everything right. Mm. So what if there's one wrong and there's a whole stack of people tied on? Well, then I'll give that lots of prizes. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have to think Sorry, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know what? It's, it's funny. When you do a, a trivia night, like at the pub, you ask everyone to put their phones in the basket or something like that. Yeah, if, if you've ever been to those pub trivia nights so people can't look up the answers on the sly and, oh, I'm just going to the bathroom for a second and then you find your answer. You, none of that. So, no, please don't try and Google the answers. And some of these answers aren't very Google. I don't think, I don't think you'll find some of them yeah, on Google. Some, some, yeah. of them, some of them we won't find in Google. So, it's just a bit of fun tonight to um, to have a few drams and enjoy ourselves tonight. So, there's the link. It's bit.ly slash fizzy quiz. Uh, otherwise, it's in your inbox as well there. All right. Um, good to see you, James Caden, Jesse Morgan, and um, someone saying, someone, Facebook user saying, more 140. That's uh, Zeno. Ah, oh, Zeno, Zeno, good to see you, mate. Um, Welcome to everyone around the country, by the way. We've got people participating in most states tonight, uh, a lot of, from um, obviously New South Wales and Victoria, Queensland, WA, ACT. I don't recall seeing anyone from Tassie on the list tonight. 
I think there's two in Tassie. Two in Tassie. Two in Tassie tonight. Um, I don't think anyone's in Northern Territory tonight tuning in. That's right. Yeah. No Northern Territory members. We don't have too many members in Northern Territory. We have two, don't we? Three. Three now. Three. Oh, wow. Not many members in the NT. Yeah. That's, um, that's 50% growth. <laughs> put that on the balance sheet. <laughs> <laughs> um, never pour another man's dram. You never pour what, another man's dram. I think what we're going to start with tonight, now you can you can contest this if you like, the pack, how it's arranged in your pack and how it is on your sheet. You should have your, uh, you should have your tasting mat, um, which came in your box. There you go. I, we encourage you to print it out and have your drones ready to go on the tasting mat. Just, and just to, to so you, you can set. We want to set the scene, and you so you understand where we're coming from tonight. Normally, I arrive here with plenty of time, and Matt and I plan things in advance and talk about stuff. I walked in the door about two minutes before going live, so we've had none of that. So that's not like an exaggeration. No, yeah, it's like yeah, it's gospel truth. Door, uh, two minutes ago, so uh, we, I, 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 we will be making this up as we go yeah, along. So yeah, no, yeah. I've not given any consideration to order. I can see straight away that okay, you have done something that I probably would not have done. Okay, well, I'm no, happy to say okay. no, no, no. To, to, to defend your decision. It's, look, Andrew, it's sometimes okay to be wrong, okay? Okay. So, so something like, yeah. no, no. I just, I had tasted the Butcher Shop Quartet and I thought it was quite charry and rich. And okay. I thought that was a bit lighter, the Caribbean cream tea. So I, oh, I, 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 will, I, I will happily defer. Let's do that then. So let's start with the spicy and sweet. It's going around the other way from the tasting. We're going to go to the bottom left, spicy and sweet, Caribbean cream tea, cask 72.91. It is higher in proof though than Butcher Shop. I don't. Hey, 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 come hey, on, hey, come hey. on! You made your decision. I don't, Stick I don't with have it. To, it's, it's, yeah, see how we go. Hey, uh, Bob, good to see you all the way from the Netherlands. Good morning to you. Fantastic for joining, Morsey. Good to see you, Robert. It wouldn't be a tasting if you weren't here as well. So good to see you. Indeed. Thank you very much. So seventy-two dot nine one. By the way, if you're a, a numbers person, seventy-two dot nine one. Not much colour there, is there? Now. Uh, members would remember, of course, because it was only just this month, but we just had a 72, um, a very special modelling. That was special. Wasn't whiskey it? enamel, yeah. This is going to be a little bit different, obviously quite a bit different, single cast, but same distillery. Boy, that is, um, that is spicy and sweet. <laughs> spicy and sweet. First fill bourbon barrel, nine-year-old. Yeah, I agree with you, James. Uh, James has just piped in here and said very similar DNA to uh, the PBJ on the nose, yeah. Oh, I screwed that up. Andrew, what are you doing there? Tell us what you're doing. I'm putting my hand on and swirling my uh, glass here to concentrate and ex excite and accelerate the aromas. For me, the nose is just a little quiet and I think there's a bit more going on and I really want to uh, agitate my whiskey Ooh. and improve the nose. Isn't it funny that something that can be 61.4% can be a little bit quiet? especially if you're used to, say, 40% whiskey? Well, I think, I mean, the, the truth of the matter is ethanol, that high ethanol can actually cloak and hide the aromas underneath it. And so, you know, there's also carry flavor. Well, flavor, but we're talking nose. Oh, aren't nose, we? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's an interesting thing. So, so the alcohol carries the flavor, but can mask the nose. So there's that there's that very interesting balance point between should you add water, and we often add water to improve the nose, but then you find you dilute the flavor. Hence the reason why adding water needs to be done uh, a bit judiciously. 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 Yes. Yes. Now, there's two things to mention. There's uh, a number of these bottlings that we're tasting tonight, there is a very, very small quantity of these available. Oh, I meant to say that. Well yeah. done. And they're online now uh, on the smws.com.au slash shop. So if you're a member of the society, you can grab one of these already. Uh, it's available on the site. And um, there's very, very, very small quantities of some of them. And one of them is indeed an outturn preview, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Wow. Screams bourbon cask, first fill. Absolutely screamed it. Space, space cider, first fill. Served to me blind. I'm, I wouldn't for a moment suggest that I'd ever pick that distillery blind, but I reckon I could could have told you that was a first fill bourbon cast from Space Cider. Yeah. I get what it means by cream teas, though. You know that? And it's got a creamy tea, texture, yeah. too. Yeah. It's quite enjoyable. And the 61's not too aggressive, is it? No, no. I've, I've got a water jug here. You may want to try adding water to some of these as we go along, as we often say. Adding water can change the, the texture and the aromas and the flavour of the whiskey as you go. Morsey's made a comment here about candied pineapple that you get in a lot of, lot of younger uh, whiskey from this distillery. And, and I agree. There is some of that there. 
No, I've been to this distillery. It is the most incredibly dull, drab 1970s place to go to. The, the, uh, it is a very unattractive and distillery. Very unattractive. And you've got the dark grains plant at the back, which I think is discontinued. I don't believe it's operational anymore. Um, and it just looks like a, something off the set of a, a, Apocalypse Now. It's, a, <laughs> it's a real. But the whiskey they make inside is another matter. And that's that's the great tragedy that we we tend to judge distilleries a lot by their uh, appearance. And, of course, um, some of the greatest whiskies are coming from very drab factories at the end of the day. But, uh, but don't judge. We're booked by its cover. Absolutely. I've got a question for you. Outside this very distillery, one of the flags out the front is a Roman flag. Yes, that's true. Well, yeah. I don't understand what but that is. But there's about this eight or nine flags from memory. They've got this, oh, that, that colonnade. Three, three of, uh, oh, there's three of the driveways you come yeah. into the roundabout and then there's a colonnade going down and there's a whole stack of them. And they're mostly Pernod Ricard-based ones and, yeah. and Chivers and all the rest of it. Chivers flag. Mm. Lots are enjoying that first round. I hope you're enjoying it too. Um, and it is quite a big, spicy and sweet whiskey. I get a lot of that su- uh, sweetness on the end. It's in the finish for me, yeah. Yeah, but the, the spiciness is right on the mid palate, isn't it? It's a zesty whiskey. It's an interesting spice. It's actually it's a dry spice. It's almost um, what's that uh, that spice that you see in a lot of Indian food, and they they pan uh, heat it in the pan first before adding it. Um, Star anise or no, nah, um, cardamom seeds. Yeah, yeah, we're getting close. Uh, coriander seeds. Yeah, cor- coriander seeds. That's mm. it. Coriander seeds. But specifically toasted on the on yeah, the, like on the dry, dry first. Yeah. first. Yeah, I'm getting loads of that on the palate. Mm. Isn't that amazing that you can get like even something as specific as a um yeah as a coriander seed, like a whole coriander seed toasted yeah. seed on a, on a, on a nose of whiskey? Isn't that fantastic? Zeno's chimed in with with cumin, and and yeah, I think there's some of that too. I've added water to mine. That didn't do an awful lot for the nose, to be fair. No, it didn't do much for the nose to me either, that one. Wow, Jesse, that's an awesome tasting note. Floral nose, wild blossoms, barky honey, touch of peanuts and pretzels. Direct with the wood on the palate, making for rye toast crust and roasted peanuts. Delicate honey, so it's savoury on the side, side of a showgrounds treat. Uh, hey, right, I think someone's just put their hand up to write some tasting notes for us. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Welcome to the society. Darren said he's found a bit of water, opens the nose and boosts the spice on the finish. That's, yeah, look, maybe it depends on the um, volume of water you added. I added just a, a dribble to mine and I'm, it's it's not done an awful lot, to be fair. Hasn't killed it, mind you. No, no. So the link for the quiz, we're doing a quiz as we go along tonight, just for a bit of fun, throw a few questions in and some prizes to be won. Uh, the quiz questions are in that link, bit.ly slash quiz or was emailed to you if you've got one of these packs. You should have been emailed to you this morning if you've got one of those packs. Um, so we're going to start with the first two. I'll, I'll start one off and then Andrew can do the next. So the first one, which is in that link, is what year was the SMWS founded? Let's start with a e- nice easy one. And you've got four options in front of you on your multiple choice there. So uh, I think you have. Yes, you do. Um, so you've got 1992. You've got 1983. You've got 1975 and 2002. What year was the Scotch Whiskey Society founded? Mm. And of course, this is this, it's a quiz, so don't put your answers in the comments. By the way, uh. yeah, don't put. <laughs> you're sort of giving away the answers to everyone if you put it in the comments. Yeah, that that, that wouldn't good help. Good point. That's a good point. Dry apple cider on the finish. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, lovely. I, I think Bre- that was a good one first start, to start with. Breakfast whiskey. Good breakfast whiskey. Breakfast whiskey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be really nerdy and say that breakfast whiskey for me would often be a refill. Ooh. <laughs> Rather than a first fill, but you know Ooh. what? That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Well, yeah. Um. <laughs> Come on, a nice like fourth refill. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I could I could see myself sitting out on the deck of the Highlander Inn in Craig Gellicky and uh, enjoying, enjoying this. This yeah. would work really well. 
Actually, I'd drink anything on the deck of the Highlander in, but anyway. <laughs> I think we'd yeah, just about do anything to be there right now. That'd be good. <laughs> no answers in the chat. There you go. <laughs> Please. Otherwise, you're, just, you're giving it away. So the first question of the quiz was, what year was the SMWS founded? So, um, Andrew, would you like to pop the second question out? Okay, so second question. Um, also multiple choice. The spiritual home of the society, which we call the vaults, has been in use as a commercial space and wine storage facility since as early as, and there are four answers for you, 1922, 1878, 1277, and 1983. Those four answers again, 1922, 1878, 1277, or 1983. I like that one. I like that one. That's a good question. See how we get along with that one. We're getting a little bit trickier as you go along. Yeah, but the point is that all four of them, there's actually a tangible reason why you could guess it. There are, there are, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry, not guess, uh, believe it to be correct. That's right. Mm. It could have been the year we moved in. Could have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't have said that out loud, but anyway, yeah. well, you know, what, what, are you, what are you hinting at here? Well, it's multiple choice of three then. Yeah, 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 that's right. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, so there's, there's a question on the screen there for the next one. Mm. Jesse, you, your your tasting notes are incredible. Well done. He, he, um, has everyone seen that question? I'm going to just show this up on screen for a second. Water brings out the uh, toasty qualities, revealing the cinnamon bark, cough drop elements of bourbon flavor profiles, such as cider vinegar, balanced with peanut butter, fresh on it from a fresh and dark bread slice of toast. Dark bread slice. Dark bread slice of toast. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I'm hungry. Oh. That's good. Mm. All right. All right. I reckon we can um, we can have a look at whiskey number two. You can leave a little bit in each in your glass as you go. Um, I, I always recommend it. I recommend it. Yes. I, I always say you should. Dangerously drinkable, says Alex is yellow. By the way, Alex, I know it's been a few weeks, but welcome to the society. Ooh, a bit more colour on this one. Mm, it is a bit to a bit toastier. So whilst we pour Butcher Shop Quartet is the next whiskey, 68. Dot Three eight. That's a fun nose, isn't it? That's a very fun nose. I love this distillery. I really do. I, I like everything about it. I like its history. I like its location. I like the experience when you visit, and I love the spirit they produce. Mm. And yet, it's such a. Uh, I won't say anonymous, but it's it just. It really is. It, it, it almost is. I mean, there's no yeah. core range. No, well. well, well. Bar, yeah, flora, fauna. Yeah, yeah. But there's no, there's not really a core range. You can't walk into your local commercial bottle shop. Yeah. and buy this whiskey. And yeah, but even amongst um, independent bottlers, even amongst the whiskey, you know, the hardcore enthusiasts community, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't get a lot of. I won't say it doesn't get a lot of love, but it certainly doesn't get a lot of attention. No, 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 no. It's mm. it's it's not. Uh, it's not a cult like distillery by any means. No, and no, no one no. sort of raves about it and goes, "Oh, have you tried the latest?" Distillery 68. No. But you know what's interesting is, is it's I think it's one of those distilleries that flies under the radar because it produces a lot of stuff that just goes into blends or it produces casks that are nice whiskies without being great whiskies. But when this distillery gets it right, my God, I mean it, when they when they really get it into a good cask, and I've had some I've had some superb sherry casks from this distillery, mm. um, it just blows you away. And you think, why does this not get more more love? Um, James is saying he's getting homemade tomato relish on the nose, and I can see where you're coming from there, mate. Yeah, I, I agree. What was that comment that just disappeared? Uh, Jesse, I'm an English major and English teacher, so please, for the love of whatever God you worship, leave your answers out of the chat. <laughs> um, so, I was, yeah, I was just going to say that's the second question there still. That's the second question on your on your whiskey quiz at the moment. We're giving away prizes for uh, most accurate and uh, first in at the end, so we'll see how we go. That was the spiritual home of the society has been in use as a commercial space since what year? And uh, to Nick down in Canberra, good to see you, mate. Um, see Nick. The answer is yes. <laughs> we really should bring those comments closer. Yeah, yeah. Would you like? Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been looking for those. Uh, Rob, it's, it's actually interesting you mentioned 68.18. That was the whiskey and almond uh, exclusive bottling, uh, which 
was in the deep, rich and dried fruits category and many members mistakenly thought it was from a sherry cask. That one was in fact a recharred hogshead, much like this. What does it mean to be recharred? What does it tell us about this one? Recharred? Yeah. Um, there's only so many times you can use a cask and uh, it's typically two or three times in the industry. And by the time you try and fill it a fourth time, you're not gonna get a lot of love. You're not gonna get a lot of, get a lot of cask interaction. And so uh, what a lot of distilleries are doing now, and this is also uh, an environmental aspect um, and sustainability, rather than throwing the cask out, we're getting another use out of it. And they're typically doing that by, by re-charring them. Of course, when we, uh, we need to char the barrels as part of that maturation process, and there's a, a lot of science and chemistry behind that, and it's got to do with the charcoal serving as a, as a, as a filter and a barrier to take out some of the volatiles in the whiskey, particularly sulphur. Um, that charcoal can remove a lot of sulphur compounds. Uh, so that recharring rejuvenates the casks and, and allows us to get another fill out of it. Yeah. Now, interestingly, I talk about charcoal filtration. Uh, that's the big key thing that distinguishes Tennessee whiskey from bourbon. The big thing uh, with, with Tennessee whiskey, and I'm talking specifically, of course, of um, Jack Daniels and um, the other one. George Dickel. Dickel, thank you very much. Um, they make everything exactly the same way the bourbon distilleries would, and then that last step is what we call the, the it's known as the Lincoln County process, and that is to filter everything through these giant stacks of um, charred maple charcoal, uh, and what comes out the other end is supposedly smoother. Is uh -huh. the word they use. I was very yeah. lucky to taste those. This um, is before and after. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of, of the of was the that at, at Jack Daniels? No, that was uh, that was at Matt Wooler's house. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Well. <laughs> I did it at the distillery. So you probably have a better experience. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it was okay. extraordinary. And, yeah, it is yeah, extraordinary. And yeah. they are very, very different. Indeed. Yeah. yeah very different. Um, just by the way, for me, the nose doesn't need water. Um, I wouldn't add, I wouldn't add water to this. I just added a tiny drop and it's just taken away that really um, rich charriness that this spirit has. I'm with uh, Joel's just made a comment here cooked mushrooms. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I love mushrooms. Love them. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm uh, for just looking at the flavor profile for this. It's juicy. I'm getting oak. I wouldn't say I've got a lot of vanilla characteristics. Not a lot of vanilla, no. It would almost be one of those whiskies that almost tends into the sort of deep, rich, and dried fruits, maybe, or spicy and sweet. I was thinking spicy and dry. Spicy and dry, right. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. That is uh, that's a, lovely that's a very pleasant dram to drink. That's a drinker's dram. That is that is a drinker's dram. Yeah, mm. and I, I love that it's not too sweet. You know, this it's, it has, has a lovely savory quality to it, which I love yeah. in a whiskey. Savory, savory, that spicy and dry. You looked at me strangely. No, no, I was, trying, I was just contemplating it. Okay. By the way, please excuse the slight error in your menus. It does. It says uh, first fill bourbon barrel. That is incorrect. It is a recharred hogshead. Just a just a small typo on that one. The, the bottle label's correct. So if you're looking at your, your little sample, that's correct. Let's move on to the next two questions. Okay, let's keep the quiz going. Okay. Uh, oh, this is very special to my heart. This question. This question is very special to your heart. This is. Um, well, do you want to? Do you want to? You do this one. Oh, no, all right. You go, you go sure, ahead. sure, sure. So the Australian branch of the Scotch Rock Whiskey Society was founded in what year? Oh, well, there you go. There's a bit of extra information there. It was founded by uh, John Rourke and Andre Tamas. In what year? In what year? Uh, Matt and I had dinner with those two gentlemen just, uh, when was that, about a month ago now? Uh, they're, they're both in fine health. And we, um, we, we, we toasted their efforts uh, at one point, thanking them for the amazing effort they did to, to uh, launch and open the society in Australia after the failed attempt in 1996, which not many people know about. You know, I'd forgotten about that one. We'll talk about that another time then. There you go. So you've got 1998, you've got 1983, you've got 2002, and you've got 2005. What year was the Australian branch of the Society founded? Five or six. 2006, sorry. 2006. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, 1998, 83, 02, or 06. There's your, uh, your four options. You can answer now on Fizzy Quiz, uh, and that's bit.ly slash Fizzy Quiz, or check your email. Uh, the next question, however... Um, which I'll, we'll throw out in just a moment. But I've, I've just finished that one, and I've, I'm, that's just delightful. I, that's that's actually a drama I want to top up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
very toasty, like very lovely toasty note to it. So it was, and it was a rechar, not what was on the notes there. No, it's rechar hogs. Yeah. yeah. Interesting uh, because it had a little bit more colour uh, than its predecessor and yet both nine years old. Joel says I'd certainly call this a quaffing dram. Yeah, this is it's very enjoyable, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it is. It's seriously, qua- I've, I've quaffed it. You've gone. quaffed it. It's gone. Yeah. It's, it's uh, post-quaffed. Uh, and Jesse says a waxy strawberry fig jam. Uh, perfume grows as well. The taste is strawberry tart with clothes. Clothes or clothes? <laughs> it does say clothes. Clothes? Are we going to go clothes? I reckon clothes. It's, it's like when you buy a strawberry tart and then you drop it on yourself. Ah, there you go, strawberry tart with clothes. Uh, <laughs> however, there are savoury elements as well. <laughs> Cooked mushrooms or even Good fried mushroom. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know, um, Jesse, is that actually you, you and Campbell? Are you hiding behind an alternate profile here? Is you just a, just a tasting panel? Ooh, wouldn't be the first yeah. time. Oh, right, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> So that question, the, just to remind you, everyone, it was question number three in the Fizzy Quiz was what you as the Society Branch founded in Australia. 98830206, answer now, because we'll move on to the next question. And that next question is, um, okay, from 1964 to 1981, Milton Duff had a second on-site distillery within its still house that used so-called Lomond stills. What was the name of the whiskey that was produced from the Lomond stills of Milton Duff? Now, this is getting a bit tricky. So this is sort of ties in with our first whiskey. So, ooh. Mm. So um, now, from memory, and I am going from memory here, there were six distilleries that installed Lomond stills. So, uh, I wouldn't get them off the top of my head, but I, I, uh, the answer is either five, six, or seven. It's 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 one of those, uh, and they're all the Allied distilleries at the time, which had come out of the Heron Walker um, stable. So this distillery was one of them. Well, we've mentioned it, Milton Duff. Uh, there was also Scarpa. Um, um, I shouldn't have started this conversation because now we're now, you, now, now I want to rattle them off and I, I bloody can't. I'm good at rattling off, say, like the distillery is currently floor malting and things like that, but I can't name the like the far. Well, the certain thing like- is that almost all the Loman stills had been removed or discontinued by the early '80s. So for those playing at home, what is a Lohman still? Oh, well, a Lohman still, you've all seen, uh, I assume you've all seen, or you can picture the, the very traditional Scottish still, very, you know, bowl, pot still kind of thing. Uh, the Lohman stills had a straight rectifying uh, rectifier. It was a straight column, just went straight up, and it had a series of plates in it. And those plates could be adjusted with angle to affect how much of the vapours made it up the, the neck. And by adjusting the angle of those plates and how many plates you put in, you could therefore influence the reflux for starters mm. um, and the copper contact and the amount of time it took to the top and all these things that affected the spirit character. And so what you actually had was so much, this is not, this is something a lot of people don't appreciate as much as they should, but so much of the character of the spirit is due to the shape of the stills and the character of the stills. And so a Lohman still allowed you to adjust that. So you, you almost had two distilleries for the price of one or three distilleries or four distilleries because you could keep adjusting those plates to come up with a completely different character each time. Uh, and that was the theory behind Lohman stills. This is back in the days of the blenders and, of, uh, you know, when, when blending was, was you know, 99% of production. And so if you could produce lots of different characters and styles of whiskey within your own house, you didn't have to go to the other companies to bring in the different types of whiskey. So you could make a, a heavy spirit and a light spirit under your own roof. And the mm. Lohman stills were all about that. That variability, that being able to create all those different styles. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, and yeah, some distilleries like Loch Lomond still still have that sort of variability. They still have that. Crazy yes, but, they, but, they, but they've removed the, oh, the rectifying removed, plates. Yes, so yes, they, they are. They're, well, so they don't refer to them as Lomond stills. They do they? No, they don't. They no, call no, them no, as yeah. they call them stills with rectifying heads. <laughs> yeah. it just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, for one reason or another, all the still all the distilleries that used Lomond stills uh, had pretty much. Uh, it went from about. I want to say the 19, late 1950s up to about not the early 80s, I think, mm. was when they were in place. So historically quite a short period of time. Very short yeah, period, yeah. Be, um, yeah. Be like talk, is we could, the next subject we're going to talk about is the distillers that had salad in boxes. And so you can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can tune in for that next week. Yes. No, no, no. But I, and I, 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 I went to the last one in use, Tamdu. Are they still using one? No, no they weren't, but they, they were, were at the time I was there. Right. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Which was 2009, and I think it got... Uh, decommissioned a year or two after that. Wow, that's late. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, well, that distillery, 68, was actually, um, for a long period, was owned by Arthur Bell and Sons. Uh, it was a company that owned it for about a good 50 years before in 85 it was bought by uh, Guinness, which then you become UDV, which then ended up being, it is part of the Diageo family these days. Um, but I, like I'm going to agree with Andrew's comment from before. It's, a, I think, a vastly underrated code, underrated distillery, and the spirit quality and cast quality that we see at the society, as picked by our expert tasting panel, is fantastic. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, this question just come in from Robert. How does the Loman still differ from the coffee still? Uh, not much. Um, the coffee still, you might recall, is actually when they use coffee stills, there's actually two stills. There's the, is it the analyzer and the rectifier, I think they call them. And the rectifier is basically a Loman still. Did I get those words right? You're looking at me. No, no, no. I was, I, was, I was getting confused with purifier for a moment there. But yeah, you're yeah, right. No, it's, it's analyze it's and rectifier, purifier, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Um, there we go. And um, Jesse Morgan says water tends to mute the whiskey overall, but not in a bad way. There's still that balance between sweet and earthy. Yeah, there is an earthy note to that whiskey, isn't there? It's lovely. It's a yeah. Well, uh, you, you said savoury. Savoury. Um, yeah. Savory I, I, note, I yeah. think you could even throw the word umami out there, and you wouldn't. Um, brothy. Brothy. Ooh. Brothy. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh, umami heaven. That was on. That was a recent release. Thirty to one one two. That's a that's a wild beast of a whiskey. That one. Um, I reckon we we have a look at the uh, the next whiskey. In the lineup. Your turn to open this one. Okay. I'm opening, um, I've heard this, just, you know, a thing or two about this distillery. Oh, well, no, no. It's, it's, it's a rumour going round. It's, yeah. it's a rumour going round. Have you heard Derbs likes this distillery? <laughs> yeah. It gets whispered at a few tastings. <laughs> whispered. <laughs> the nose on that 68 is like opening a fresh roll of Werther's Original. Wow. Oh, now we all but, like the Werther's Original. But that's not opening a fresh roll. Yeah, okay. I know what you mean. Yeah. Oh, look at the colour. <laughs> Are you happy with the size of your pour? I'm fine. Yeah, no, you, right. you, you, no, you got heavy. <laughs> I, I, I deliberately underpoured this. Under uh, you're you're very kind. Uh, come on, come on. I, I, I appreciate your uh, charity there. No, no, of course. I, I, that I, is I, a glorious. Look, that's a glorious that, colour, isn't it? Glorious colour. Mm -hmm. Full ten years in a refill Oloroso, but and it is in the deep, rich, and dried fruits. It's the third whiskey in the uh, triptych series that came from Distillery Number no. One, um, and it is uh, yeah. Now, those that came to, we did feature this at the, the tour of Speyside, did we not? We did. We did, yes. We did. Yes, you did. But this is, um, yeah. So those that, those that came to the Sydney tasting, the, the Grand Tour of Speyside, will have tried this that night. Joel, you made a comment there that's just a bit too cryptic for me, mate. I'm sorry. Uh, I, unless you're referring to my wardrobe tonight. I assume, that, I, I, I assume that's a dig at my wardrobe. But... He, look, he always looks sharper than me. I'm just breaking the society garb. He, he's the one who turned he, into the waistcoat. He said, I'm wearing a black and white shirt, so come wearing black and white. So He's not wrong. He's not wrong. And that's why he turned up two minutes early. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Brown mushrooms covered in icing sugar. So the word mushroom isn't used in this. It says desert triptych, mushroom sorbet. And I, I never agreed with that. I, thought, I, I always felt this was a poorly worded name. Yeah, really? I never, I never, well, mushroom, I, I just don't get it. I don't get those, those fungal notes. Uh -huh. <laughs> 63.4%. It's a bit of a bruiser. Now, I just had a taste, and then I've tasted it, I've nosed it after tasting it, and I'm getting an almost earthiness the second time nosing it. Earthiness, yes. So yeah. maybe that's that sort of fun. Oh, yeah. Thing. Yeah, okay. Maybe. It does say deep, dark, and full of secrets, musky, primroses, pressed wildflowers, plum jam, five spices. There's a lot going on in this whiskey. It's, it's a full sherry maturation from a distillery that knows how to do a thing or two about uh, sherry maturation. Yeah, they do. The, the, the alcohol, um, it's, it's only 2% up on, on our first whiskey of the night, but mm. it certainly seems to have a bit more sting to it. That's, like, that's how my palate responded yeah. anyway. Oh, on the palate it does, yeah. Mm. Well, it, you almost think that by the time you get here your third whiskey, it should, like you, your, your palate's acclimatised. Yes, yeah. So you, you think it wouldn't be as stinging, but it, it's mm. still there. There's, there's a bit of sting to this one. And and I'm following up because uh, Joel's just made a comment about the nose saying that, uh, so beg your pardon, it was Robert. Um, Robert Akers said he found it a little fierce. Mm. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though. It's just it's just part of the flavour. It's part of the experience. You may wish to try this with a drop of water. 
But uh, as Andrew and many of you have heard me say a number of times, bourbon casks often appreciate a few drops of water. Sherry casks tread carefully and very old whiskey almost Don't. never. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> well, yeah, but we have. We have. It's, it's the exception, not the rule. Yeah, it's the exception, not the rule, yeah. Ooh. It is lovely, though. It is. Yeah. Well, you didn't need to tell me that. Well, uh, that leads us into, um, I think we should look at the next two questions, actually. So uh, if you're still following on the, along the quiz in another tab, perhaps, or or on your phone, you can you can do it anywhere you like. On another tab. Boy, it's, uh, that's a sign of the times, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, if you if you have this open as, on your as, as, flat top, as long as your third tab isn't following a virtual tasting a Caden head right now or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, so I reckon I reckon we'll um, we'll go into this next question. Okay. Uh, here we are. So oh, we're up to this is question five. Yeah. So this is question five on your list there, and this sort of ties in with the previous uh, the previous whiskey. So we're a little bit ahead of ourselves here with this whiskey, but from 1933 to 1985, before it was purchased by Guinness, Distillery 68 was an integral part of which blended Scotch whiskey? Now, if you're watching at home, I sort of gave the answer away maybe yes, five minutes Yes, ago. I did <laughs> notice that. <laughs> so, so that people actually have a chance of getting this one right. Was it a part of J&B? Was it a part of Johnny Walker? Was it a part of Bell's? Or was it a part of Monkey Shoulder? There are four answers right there. You have four selections, four answers. Four, the four to pick from. Now, as I understand it, I mean, you've said the, the years that it was, uh, well, we know it was, <laughs> how, do I, how do I say no, this without giving the answer, answer away? Oh, I'm answer trying not to. I, I guess my point is it still is an integral part. Yes, it is. No, it still is. Well, yeah. to, to, to an extent, yes. I mean. It, but it, like, basically was that blend. Yes. Yeah, well. Hmm. Distillery 68 was an integral part of which blended Scotch whiskey? Pop your answer in the um, on the form and go from there. Have you had a water? I haven't. Are you going to? I am. Okay. Uh, this is a clinical tasting. One, you, one you, you should. You should. You didn't even finish it. Um, that's for after dinner. Oh, that's the after dinner drink. <laughs> <laughs> It's always a method. Yeah, <laughs> method to the madness somewhere. Oh, wow. Oh, that's just really opened up the nose. Mm. One of those cherry casks that does appreciate a few drops of water. Well, it's 63%. I think that was the clue. Mm. I think when you look at most of the uh, the, the cast strength whiskies that we experience from this distillery, they're generally in the in the mid to high 50s. Mm. Um the exception, I mean, there's been a couple of casks that were, were 60%. Uh, it, who's that strange independent bottler? Uh, Whiskey and Wisdom. They, they, oh. put, they put a, <laughs> a couple of casks at uh, 60%, didn't they? Um, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. But, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder where you're going with that. <laughs> yeah, I can see yeah. that in your eyes. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's the beauty of live television, folks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there's a nine-minute delay here, right? Numb and delayed? No, no, damn it. <laughs> yeah, and then this is the exception of the rule. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you, you said quite rightly that when it comes to sherry casks, tread carefully. Mm. And I think this is one that does benefit from a drop on both nose and palate. It does, I've, yeah. I've, I've enjoyed both. That's lovely. Um, just, a, just a sneaky little plug that uh, if, if any of these are available on the website, they are available now. If they're already dearly departed, then I'm afraid that's how single cast whiskey works. And I can tell you, for this one, there were very few bottles available. We did put them up on the website tonight, but there weren't many. So if you're enjoying this, um, move quickly. It did get featured in Andrew's um, Tour of Space, Space Hide, So, yeah, it, it was already very popular on that night. So Indeed. In fact, uh, we had 30 bottles in the country and a good chunk of them went at that first tasting. That's the nature of the beast. Sometimes whiskies only get featured at events or, or like tonight or at I, I say this, I, I get a lot of emails from members all around the country who ask about allocations and, the, and you know, things that uh, they see on outturn or don't see on outturn. Um, we bring a lot into the country that you don't necessarily see on your outturn. We bring a lot of stuff in that gets featured exclusively at events. Yeah. Um, 
Which and, is the nature of the beast. That's how. That, well, that, yeah. that's that's why we always say to people: there's an event near you, uh, you should go along to it. <laughs> you get to taste stuff that you might not otherwise have known was in the country. I'm just going to throw the next question in, um, so that we've all, so we're sort of up to date here. It's actually sort of relating to the last whiskey as well, um, and it is question number six. Andrew. Oh, I'm reading this one, aren't I? Sure. Okay. Blair Athol Distillery and Blair Athol The Village are two different places located roughly 13 kilometres apart. Which town or village is Blair Athol in? Hmm. And we are just talking about this off air before, but uh, another little known fact is that uh, Blair Athol The Distillery and Blair Athol The Village are spelt differently. That's not a typo in the question that's on your screen there. One of them has one L and the other has two L's, which is also a trivia question that uh, we can rely on at times. Yeah, yeah, one, one L and two L's, yeah. Uh, musty old books and leather on the nose with water added, says James Caden. And um, a few sips in this really settles into a richer tone, maybe like a dried date more than a fig. Very cool. And Jesse, I've got to throw this up. This is huge. Oh, wow. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Uh, one, two, two. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Uh, my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my favourite cast number, wink, wink, lemon and thyme on the nose, going too deep and you'll miss it. Burnt bread crumbs, a subtle sherry rather than explosion, or miss it been used in cooking. For the taste, prepare yourselves and be found lacking. A an explosion of fruit with berries and stone fruit. <laughs> and then, uh, look. I'm, 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 I'm that guy on um, Home Improvement, <laughs> yeah, the, the neighbour next door. <laughs> Wilson, 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 yeah, yeah Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh, there we are. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, there we go. So that was the question number six, by the way, on your screen right now. Uh, that's for your quiz. Pop it in. Pop the answer in. This is not multiple choice. This is uh, this is actually just you've got to type this one in. And if it, if I've put a few variations of spelling just in case. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now it is an amazing uh, town village to go to. Yeah, right. A fantastic place. And if, if you're into running and jogging, it's an awesome town to go jogging around in. I went to the castle. Is that that's in the village? No, there's, I can't um, there, there's no castle in this village. Well, then I must be. I'm getting my I'm getting my wires crossed. Mm. Hmm. There you go. There's a good palace, though. Palace. Okay, yes, that's, yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> semantics, pedantics. <isn't> <laughs> okay, here, here. <laughs> so then, <laughs> sorry, I'll kill them off here, it's fine. You don't have to witness that. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. That was the, that's the question down there. That's question number six. And um, that's dram number one dot two to three. I'd, I'd love to hear a few more tasting notes, a few more tasting notes from people on that one. Um, bolognese sauce now. Yeah, wow. Bolognese sauce, that's a good one. That's that sort of it, – it's funny, actually, we've got a member uh, who often refers to these distillery expressions. He often, often says soup mix. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Our so friend, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like he says soup mix. Uh, and he really somebody. associates that with this distillery, doesn't he? Yeah, he yeah, does. He yeah. associates it with car strength versions of this distillery, and, and, I, and I totally get that. And, Lisa, good to see you. Uh, we love Blair oh, – yeah, 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 we love Blair Athol, first Scotch distillery we ever visited – uh, we're on our honeymoon. Fantastic to hear, Annalisa. And I think you picked one of these up. Uh, I can't remember from the um, from the space. Yeah, that, that's funny, Annalisa, because uh, I'm not sure if uh, that Blair Athol was the first distillery I ever visited. It was either that or Edradow. It was Edradow for me. Uh, okay, well, it was yeah. one of those two, and I can't remember which one it was now. It was too, too too long ago, and one was in the morning, one was in the afternoon, and I've forgotten which order. And it was before the days of digital photos, so you can't look at the date stamp and and, and tell. So. <laughs> uh, were you drinking, Matt? When was this? What are you asking about? <laughs> it's, it's his job description. I mean, come on. I don't understand what that question is. I don't understand that question. I think I'll look just to see yes. <laughs> That's right. So we're fine. Uh, yeah. That's a good job. Enjoy that. Just whilst we're enjoying that, actually, I'm just going to bring up um, – some details about something we sort of started talking about just uh, last week because it's it's we're heading into the week before the announcement. Uh, it is indeed um, some of the details coming up. I'll just show on screen here. I'm just going to kill off that uh, for a second, just so we can see. Mark your diaries. Uh, that the 
Our turn falls on the first Friday of every month of the year, except for our festive outturn, which is generally around mid-November. So this year it falls on the 13th. Uh, no superstitions, please. Friday the 13th of November <laughs> at midday, Australian Eastern's Daylight Saving Time. That is, um, that's when the full festive outturn falls this year. It's a biggie. It's a biggie. There's our cover art, which we sort of leaked a little bit uh, last week. And um, apologies to Laura for showing that nice and early. And then we also did a little video review of 80.14, uh, which is the November model of the month in the issue, which you can check out on our YouTube channel if you missed out on that one. There it is, it's sitting in outturn. That's the only one of the only leaks we've done that, about what's coming up next month. We're going to be leaking a bit more in the weeks to come. And of course, we already sort of announced the um, the advents on its way, the full society advent calendar for 2020. Very exciting. We're not getting too many of them. So we'll, uh, we'll, you'll see an email blast in your inbox if you remember on details on how to secure that. And of course, we have our full ultimate whiskey and chocolate pairing, which there was uh, announced earlier today just on socials, but you're, it'll be in your inbox shortly as well. And that will be fantastic. That's so good. Each each chocolate's been paired to each cask. That's It's just been it's fantastic. And I, th I think the other thing that's worth saying, um, having having selected the whiskeys for that, the whiskey lineup that night is unbelievable. Yeah. We know the chocolates are going to be fantastic. Yeah. We, we know, know they've been paired to the whiskeys. Yeah. So uh, put those two together. That is going to be one awesome, awesome experience. I also just want to make mention of this, this particular this no, this particular event in that it's actually the pack is enough for two, well and truly. Like it's a proper pack which includes uh, two of each chocolate and a full size dram of each. So it's definitely a sharing pack. Andrew and I are able to share these drams, and there's even a little bit left over in each. So it's actually it'll be plenty for one pack between two if you want. So don't worry too much about that. And um, yeah, and yeah, that's all I want to show for now on this and that side of things. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> Let's go that way. There we go. Ooh. Um, cool. What do you reckon? Uh, I reckon uh, that fourth whiskey is looking bloody tantalising. It's got a black label. It, I, yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so we black have... label used to mean something else when I was a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear, oh dear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just stating facts here. No, that's true. He's, he's right, yeah. Um, you go for it. Uh, I, 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 know, I, I started drinking Johnny Walk when I was 14. I don't know about you. Oh, but, uh, right. Oh, were you thinking oh, of something no, else? No, no, oh, you said, you no. dirty mind. You, you said, oh. you said. <laughs> uh, Got him. Wow. 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 Um, hey, it was your turn to open this no, one. No, I opened. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I opened the one, remember? And, yeah, all right. Um, oh, there's some colour there. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is exciting. So we're going to the Peter Whiskey next. We're going to the 29.271 in the lightly Peter category. Now I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be really um, honest with you on this one for a second. As we're pouring that, or if you've already poured it and you're letting it sit, ooh, wow. Um, <laughs> I am uh, uh, personally, when it comes to our peated offerings at Society, there's a number of codes I I sort of reach for and look for before the 29s. Uh, that's just me. I, I prefer I often personally prefer 53s, 16s, uh, all sorts of different 33s, all sorts of things like that that I that I would go for, uh, even Peter 135s, um, 93s, things like that that I love. 29s I love as well, but just they're, they're a different category for me generally. And second thing is port casks I'm especially critical of. I often go, well, I don't think port, port casks and whiskey generally go too well together. Um, but when I first noticed this whiskey as we were preparing these sets, this is unbelievable. And this is probably one of the most integrated uh, well put together 29s I think I've ever enjoyed. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm glad you pulled that back in then because the, the no. first 50% of what you just said was bollocks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying I don't love our 29s. I love our 29s. It's just that there's other Peter Whiskies I do. Yeah, 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 no, no, I'm, I'm no, teasing. No, he's winding up. I'm teasing. But, but, but podcasts, but, I don't know. I, find for me, I agree I with them, podcast. Port, podcasts are. are, are um, you've got to be careful how you say this. Oh, uh, I'd say that I should, they should be treated with the same respect as virgin oak. All I'll say is that I've I've struggled to find podcasts that I've really enjoyed. Yes. I, that's, that's the best yeah. way to put it, yeah. I think. Um, but, look, I, I remember certainly in, in the early days of, of the society here in Australia when offerings from 29 came in, they just blew us away. And and there's a, there's a, there's a few uh, members um and our good friend Tim Duckett is one of them who, mm. uh, and, and the aforementioned soup mix, man, um, have, 
a large collection of those early 29s. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and they were stunning. They yeah. were unbelievable to the point where, you know, when a society bought out a 29, you, you just jumped on Jump on, yeah. And, and did over the 53, which you mentioned. Yeah. So I agree with you there. Um, so anytime I see a 29, I, I, I do pounce on it. And, yes, you, you see the port cask and you go, oh, well, I hope they got it right. Yeah. And, and they, on this occasion they did. Absolutely did, yeah. yeah. So it was 19 years in ex-bourbon, two years in a second fill uh, port barrique. And I think that's the difference because it was second fill. I yeah, that... second fill hasn't really, yeah, not too much influence. Uh, it's just given it that lovely sort of, just that lovely ruby sweetness on the top of the spirit here. This is it's the dressing on top of the cake for this one. Um, the icing on top of the cake, I should say. Uh, but it would just just to really, just to put this into context, we are drinking a, a 21-year-old Isla whiskey. Like this, this requires a bit of time and a bit of uh, contemplation. Oh. <laughs> Andrew's having a moment. How good is that? Just a pro tip, by the way. When you see Andrew do this manoeuvre here, <laughs> you know he's really enjoying yes, it. Yes, that's he's true, really isn't it? I've seen him do it yeah. too many times. That is the giveaway. That's the giveaway, yeah. 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 You've been watching me. <laughs> I'll tell you another thing about this, and, and there's a few people watching who will appreciate this, but um, this transports you to the island. No, nosing this just takes me to to, to to Isla. Yeah. There's a certain, like, almost um, saline air. Yeah. On top of the glass there. there, there I've, I've spent a couple of beautiful afternoons at different times on different trips there um, uh, looking out uh, basically near the, near the Bamor Hotel um, and just looking out over the lock and... And you just, as you say, that maritime sea breeze comes through, and the smell of, uh, of peat in the air, typically coming from the Bermuda Distillery nearby, not this one. And man, it just transports you there. Incredible. It's just, it's not into it's it's so. I just found this so well integrated into the fact that it's it's old, it's lovely, it's stately, it's it's delicate, but it's just got this lovely, just slight bit of icing on top of it, which I, I wasn't ready for. Um, Nick uh, in Canberra has just asked a, a good question. Are there a lot of core range port casks? Um, only one I can think of, and he's brought, oh, you've brought it up. Thank you. Um, core range? No, there's not many, and you've named a, a few of them there. Uh, Glen Morangy, of course, is a is a big one with their uh, their port casks. It's the Quinta Reuben from memory. Yep. Uh, on Isla, uh, it's not part of their core range, but Kilhoman brought out a series of, of port casks released recently. Uh, some of them came to Australia, in fact, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Through, through a particularly the, that um, private club that has its basis in uh, in WA. Sure. Tram full. I'm oh, right. To. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't know that one. Um, yeah. So the, the, you're right, Nick. There's, there's not too many around. Uh, the reason I was trying to choose my words carefully before, of course, is that the Australian whiskey industry is very reliant on port casks and, uh, and that can be hit and miss as, as, as we know. I've let that sit now for a few moments and I'm getting almost like a ham off the bone. Oh, hugely. No, no, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, good call. Like, uh, good yeah, call. fresh ham off the bone. And when you get a peated whiskey with a wine cask, and it's typically more often sherry than it is port, but a mm. great tasting note or descriptive that people often reach for is um, pea and ham soup. Mm, not a long right, way yeah. away from yeah, removed yeah. from what you just said. That's actually probably, that's more descriptive even. I'd say yeah, you, pea and ham soup's right on the money, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, Ardbeg in a um, in a good sherry cast just screams pea and ham soup mm, every time. Yeah. Mm. Pardon me. It's a lovely whiskey. Someone says here. Is that Zeno? Uh, that's know. Hems. Hems. Thank you, Hems. That's great. You'd hope, you'd hope it'd be a lovely whiskey. It is here. Like I say, a panel approved 29.271, a uh, 21 year old single glass. It's not often you taste a, well, look, it's not often you taste a 21 year old whiskey. It's mm. less often you taste a 21 year old whiskey from this distillery. Yeah, very, um, very old. Not and then, and, you know, I, I know you've covered this on some live streams uh, over this year and, and, and prior, but uh, whiskey drinkers and enthusiasts can fall into the trap of, you know, that an older whiskey is, is, is a better whiskey. And if you love an older whiskey, well, surely an older one must be better. And we forget that peat dissipates over time. And uh, a 21 year old peated whiskey will not be as peaty and as smoky as a 10 year old or 12 year old, for no. example. 
So I know a lot of people sometimes spend out the spend the money and, and reach for the 18-year-old or the 20-year-old Isla whiskey and they're expecting something really smoky and petty and they're disappointed when they don't get that. And that's in the science. You're not going to get that with a, with an older uh, whiskey, but what you should get is a level of refinement uh, and a level of sophistication. And, and this cask is just exuding that for me. I think as I like to say, they, they, they pick up these the uh, oak sugars and complexity. They pick up all that lovely sort of uh, oak over time. Uh, uh, older Isla whiskies carry this certain elegance. And if you're expecting a, a peat bomb, you know, like a really like, you know, massive seven-year-old from Distillery 53 or something, you know, you, you're going to be disappointed. But if you're expecting something a bit more complex, a bit more sort of refined, as Andrew says, and just a bit more sort of um, a bit more subtle, a bit more symphonic, you might find something like this quite enjoyable. And the other thing that it's worth discussing and taking into account is don't ever assume that the Isla cask you're drinking from actually matured on Isla. Uh, distillery 53, for example, and not a single barrel uh, sits on the on on, on the island. Uh, everything from from Kalila actually gets matured on the mainland. Um, this distillery uh, does a bit of both. Uh, the, yeah, the yeah. both of the, the majority of it is, is is on the island. But it's always amused me when when people pick up a Kalila and go, "Oh, I get that maritime air," and, and it actually matured in Glasgow. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and now Glasgow's on the on the Clyde, so I suppose you, you could argue there's water not too far away. But uh, and it was it wasn't shifting cask either; it was shifting tanker. In tanker, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, comment from Jay Davis here uh, saying that um, when the twenty nine was transferred to a Port Barique, it would have been less than half as usually Port Barique a five hundred liter. No, no, no. So Barique is a fancy French word for barrel. So it would have been probably a 200 litre um, port barrique, dare I say, uh, two, two to 230 litre barrique um, with the larger surface air contact area also impacted the flavours. I don't think in this case it, it's a thing. I think it would have gone from one cask size to the same cask size. It would have gone from X bourbon wood, it says. I'm going to assume that was probably a hoggy, uh, maybe to a barrique. So once accounting for the angel share over the first 19 years, it would have fit. Probably fair. 21 years ago, you can guarantee it would have been a hoggy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't have been a barrel 21 years ago. It would have been, yeah, it would have been a hoggy. Um, Hoggies are disappearing from the the industry. Yeah, They they really are. Uh, Certainly the ex-bourbon ones. Um, It's now just costing too much time and effort to to recoup the casks. I mean, a hogshead is is typically a bourbon barrel that's come from the States at 200 litres and then they've added extra staves to increase it to 250 litres. And, and the economics behind doing that now are, are being lost. It's, it's extra cost, it's extra time. Uh, and a lot of distilleries are now just simply bunging it straight in the bourbon barrel. And you may have noticed we're getting a few more of those come through the society because that decision really occurred eight, nine, ten years ago and those are starting to come through now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, when you look at the number of hogsheads in the game, certainly ex-bourbon hogsheads, there's less and less of them. Yeah, okay. You know one thing we don't see much of? We, do, we saw one recently in an outturn, but it was a first fill bourbon hogshead and it, it, that's it was that's almost an anomaly, I, anomaly I, yeah. I, I saw that and thought it was a, a typo to be yeah, honest yeah, yeah yeah so i hope that answers your question Jay still Davis. a lot of hogsheads being produced for the wine industry and yeah. as such uh we, we, well we do see sherry hogsheads come in a fair bit yep yep particularly uh, the american oak one yeah american mm-hmm. oak sherry hogs yep maybe maybe less of sherry butts as a result because of the economics behind using sherry hoggies yeah, yeah, possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Gee, that's good, isn't it? I'm, I'm yes. just, I'm just letting that sit. Um, it's fifty-five point five percent. I'm not inclined to add any water to that. I don't think it needs it. I think it'll just fall apart. Peated whiskey often fall apart, like for me anyway. It's, it's soft. It's gentle. There's nothing aggressive about it. The volatiles have, 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 have gone and, and, and been removed. This uh, twenty, Darren Howie says this twenty-nine takes us back to a cold day in the Laphroaig Dunnage, doing a barrel tasting. Awesome. It's a shame you read that out. You just mentioned the distillery name, so that's one nil to me. Ah, uh, excuse me. I didn't, no, no, hold on. I'm reading a comment, and I'm actually just saying, this whiskey. <laughs> this whiskey reminds me. Oh. Did you okay. know? I, I, I was very careful. Well with that. played. I was very careful well with played. that. Don't worry. Otherwise, I would have said this. Okay. Again. Oh, well played. Yeah. So I could almost ask it, say it's uh, uh, one nil my way, actually. So okay. Just, yeah. right on. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we make an effort of not trying to say the distillery name. And uh, as as for those who are, who are newer members, we we don't put the distillery name on the bottle. We use a coding system. Uh, the two best parts about that is it removes your preconceptions about what you might expect from this whiskey. You think you know Distillery Twenty Nine until you taste a twenty one year old Port Barrique from it, and you might think you don't know it suddenly. And that's an interesting different avenue. It also means we're not competing with their brand, so it means we get to source the best spirit and the best casks from these distilleries, but not competing against some of these multinational mega distilleries in some cases. 
<laughs> oh, James, you bastard. I was aware of that. I was, I, was, I was actually aware of that. And I thought, I hope I got that one through the net. And I didn't. It's now on the screen. <laughs> I, thought oh, it, I thought it wouldn't count because we weren't actually drinking oh, 53 tonight. Oh, there but, we go. Uh, there yeah. we go. Um, oh, you signed in tonight. Yeah, awesome. Well, oh, Andrew, if you've got a voucher company you signed in tonight, then I've been because of your threshold. If, for those who don't know, if you spend a thousand dollars or more in your um, membership year, you get your membership credit credited back to you. So you get a hundred and twenty dollar voucher, which is which is great. That's an awesome way to um, refund your credit if you like. Hello from Darwin. Oh, there we go. Uh, I love the medicinal notes. This is a standout. It reminds me of Isla as well. Lisa, good to hear from you. Thanks for joining in tonight. Do you know what's wrong with this whiskey? Tell me. It's empty. Ah, yeah, I've been, I've been sitting on mine. Oh, you did well. I think, that, I think we're going to go for the next two questions, though. That was a beautiful drop. Okay. Now, Andrew, would you like to take us into this next one? As long as you don't adjust the score to 2-1. I, I will not adjust any score. It's fine. Okay, because I'm, I'm reading it out. Well, you wrote this question. so you I did write, write this question. So okay. <laughs> Didn't know you were going to make me sad at this time. Um, okay. So I'll read it out loud, and I assume you'll bring it up on the screen at the same time. I will. Much is made of the fact that Lefroy had a female manager from 1939. Her name was Bessie Williamson, and she went on to own the distillery outright from 1954 to 1967. However, which Scottish distillery is generally famed for having the first female owner? This is question number seven in the quiz. Question number seven. Now, um, does that mean that there's some other answers in there as well? Yeah, I, th I think there are actually. So. Um... There we go. Your options are Ardbeg, Blair Athol, Cardew, and North British. North British grain whiskey. Yeah. In the heart of Edinburgh. In the heart. People forget that. There is a distillery smack bang in the middle of Edinburgh. It's uh, it's North British, which is a grain distillery. And now smack bang in the middle of Leith. Yes, true. Yeah. yeah. Actually, two distilleries in Leith. You've got Crabby's and uh, Port of Leith. So there you go. There's a question. You've got Lafroy got a female manager, Bessie Williamson. That's the question for that's the, the question on the screen there for uh, question number seven in the quiz tonight. And uh, it's a wonderful story. Do you, do you know the story of Bessie? I know the story of Bessie. I didn't know much about the story of the answer for this one. Right. Okay. So so Bessie was training for something else, and she decided to take a summer job at uh, at, at Lefroy Distillery and just handle the books and do secretarial work basically, and um, just fell in love with the place so much she stayed there. She became an integral part of the of the management. And the owner um, subsequently died and left the distillery to her in his in his will, and she uh, assumed uh, ownership as a result. By all accounts, a completely platonic relationship, so there was nothing going on there. Uh, but he he trusted her to be the best person to um, bequeath the distillery to. That's a good word. <laughs> platonic or bequeath? Don't say that when I'm drinking fizzy water. Uh, it's uh, bequeath. It's a cool bequeath. sounding word. Okay. But as I say, much is made of that. But uh, in actual fact, there was a, a, another distillery that was famed for having the first female owner. So that's what we're looking for. And we're looking for the name seven. of that distillery. Yes. The name of that distillery. You've got Blair Athol, Ardbeg, Cardew, and North British as your options. Tick your option and, um, and we'll move on to the next question, which we'll move on to right away because you've heard this one now, and it's actually relating to this question, uh, which is, so the last question is, which distillery, and even better yet, question number eight, what was her name? So uh, your options for what her name was, is it Helen Cumming? Is it Heather Cumming? Is it Elizabeth Cumming? Or is it Rachel Barry? Ooh, you've put a, you've put a trick in there. I have put a trick in there. Yes, okay. I, I, I wrote the question that didn't provide the multiple choice answers. So you've, you've, you've added something in there that I, I reckon is uh, quite a curveball. It's a bit of a curveball. Well so, done. You know, okay. See how we go. See yeah, how we go. Okay. So the that's, last question. That, that's even going to test those on Google, actually. You, yeah, you, well, you don't, could, you're not supposed you, to be using Google. But you could Google that and I reckon you get the wrong answer. Yeah, I reckon he's right. You reckon you, yeah, you could Google this and probably get the wrong answer. Mm. 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 <laughs> um, very cool. Very cool. So question eight. What was the name of, of the first female owner of a distillery? And the previous one was what what distillery was it? A couple of fantastic comments coming in here on the Facebook stream, which I 
missed, uh, including a great random question from him. Is fizzy water better than still when doing a whiskey tasting? I think that's subjective. I think other, each individual have their own response to that. Um, I sort of changed my I changed my approach on this based off Andrew because Andrew always used to say that he, he loves – you love sparkling water. I do. Uh, you're a sparkling water fan. I am. I drink, uh, I drink too much of it. In fact, I, I'll, I'll even go so far to tell everyone on stream that Andrew has a sparkling water tap. At home. <laughs> so now you know how much he loves sparkling water. This guy doesn't even just on a soda stream. He's got it hardwired. So, uh, and so <laughs> I think I think a sparkling water is a really good palate reset. If you are going between each tram tonight and you want to reset, I think it just sort of bubbles your tongue a bit and gets it gets it ready. Re reset's a good word. I yeah, like, I like, your, reset, you like, like your terminology. Yeah. Water, straight, still water's fine as well, but sparkling water if, if you like sparkling water. Yeah, but if you like it. Yeah. And there'll be people who can't stand it and prefer so neat, so that's fine. Whatever works for you. Honestly, that's the correct answer. Whatever works for you. Yeah. Um, hoping there is an encouragement prize. We'll get about two right total, I think. <laughs> well, <laughs> if, if the winner gets three right or something and you get two, then, hey, you know, what, we'll see what we can do, James. I tell you what, forgive me, this is going to sound like a very self-indulgent plug and it's not intended to, but if you go to the, that strange website called Whiskey and Wisdom and go to the search thing and put in Whiskey Quiz, there's a quiz that appears on that website every year. It gets updated. It's, yep. it's due to be updated again. If you're interested in Whiskey Trivia, there's a really interesting quiz there with, from memory, 20 or 25 questions. Test your Whiskey Trivia. So go to whiskeyandwisdom.com. Um, I'm going to raise them just a bit here. Like, honestly... That quiz is great, but you've got to be a mega nerd to, to get really good scores. To get really good scores, yeah, you yeah. have to be a super. But that's the whole point of it. That's the whole point. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, there, I think. I think there's 25 questions. I think you can get a score out of 25 if you get in the low teens. You're doing pretty bloody well. I think my last score on it was like 23 out of 25. Yes, which was pretty good. But I was still pissed off that I got those two wrong. And yeah. I, and one of them I contested your, your you. You did. So yeah, did yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was still wrong. <laughs> so that's okay. Hmm. <laughs> That, That's uh, glorious. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad uh, yeah. that was in the lineup. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, we've done a few of these virtuals now where we've had a peated whiskey that's quite young. Yes. You know, yeah. right near the end, and like a, tw a 10, 8, 10, 12 year old peated whiskey, or even younger. Um, we had a six year old in one of them. But this is um, to have a nice, stately, old uh, peated whiskey from Distillery 29. Mm. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? You just said stately and old, which which suggests uh, like a, some sort of geriatric thing. For me, that was very, a very lovely, lovely whiskey. Lot, very lovely. It's, it's no, still no, alive, sure, yeah. Sure. yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I will die on a hill of sparkling water. To, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so will Andrew. So there we go. That was question eight. Uh, what was her name? And we'll move on to the next ones in just a moment with um, our next dram. It's got to be your turn to call first. Yeah, sure. We're finishing with a rum. It's uh, we've we've just got decided to go with rum just to mix things up. Dessert, dessert, a bit of a dessert dram. Mm -hmm. Something to finish with after you've tried a few of the others. I think rum is such a fascinating thing for Australians, and 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 when the society first started bottling rums and certainly making them available in Australia. Uh, I had a lot of interesting conversations with uh, my counterparts in the UK because um, they had a very different experience and rum serves a very di is in a very different place in, in their culture in Scotland. In mm. Australia, rum has a special place. And, and look, I'm, I'm talking very crude stereotypes here, but, you know, we all sort of grew up with Bundy rum. Most, most uh, Aussies sort of have that, that rite of passage where you get tanked as a 17 or 18-year-old on Bundy rum and coke and... Uh, vow never to touch the stuff again, uh, and and Bundy in Australia, you know, Bundy rum is kind of what we we perceive as rum. Of course, there's Bacardi, which which is almost invariably sold in in that you know that, that cheap bottle as a mixer. Uh, and so we grow up with this with this strange context of what rum is, and then the society started bottling these amazing, incredibly amazing rums. And initially, we struggled to sell them when they when we brought the first ones into the country because because uh, of that preconceived notion to most Aussies about what a rum was. Uh, and then, and I then, argue perhaps also because it was a whiskey society bottling rum. It was a bit of that too, yeah. undoubtedly. And, and this is this is where the discussions came from from the yeah. UK. Um, but then once you dive into that space, and, and I had my epiphany moment. We did a whiskey and rum. Sorry, beg your pardon. We did a society rum night uh, in Sydney. I don't know, six, seven years ago now. 
with the guys from Quitting Time and it was the most amazing night with the most amazing rums and it just opened my eyes to the complexities and the glorious nature you can have from a, a good rum. Mm. And, of course, the society has just gone from strength to strength, bottling some wonderful uh, casks and expressions along the way. Now, I've not tasted this uh, until tonight, so this is, this is going to be a first time for me with this one and I'm looking forward to it. Mm. We had a series of uh, events in um, 2018, which was a national um, series of events, which was the, uh, the what was it called? It was, five, um, uh, it was something to do with five flavour, and it, we, we used a number of rums in that series, and there were some unbelievable casks in there. And I think this one sort of got its first feature last year at some point. But um, do, do you get that immediate, like straight on the nose, you get like fresh spearmint, a, a crushed, crushed spearmint? Straight away in your hand. Uh, on the power of suggestion, I'll say yes, but I don't Maybe, think I, I don't yeah, think I would okay. have got it had you not said it. Yeah. Uh, Robert uh, has asked the question: Was there a non-Scotch that society struggled to sell at first? Yes, uh, I remember in two thousand and six we brought in the first bourbon. It was an incredible seven-year-old from Heaven Hill, and it stuck around for years because members of the society back then did not want to buy a bourbon, and it was that same thing mm. for most Aussies. We thought bourbon was Jim Beam White Label. Uh, and the fact that you could have an amazing single cask, amazing expression of it was a, um, a, a hurdle for, for some, some to overcome. So, yeah, that was, a, that was hard work trying to, trying to move that. And it was the most glorious bourbon. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. There were some early um, Heaven Hill casks, weren't there? Which oh, they were, and they were unbelievable. Mm. And they were pre the, uh, the fire they had at the, at the distillery. Well, actually, speaking of pre anything, this rum is 26 years of age and it was uh, distilled. You're looking for that? That one. <laughs> Thank you. It was distilled in 1991, which is a good two or three, two ish years before uh, CL Investments came in and took over the distillery and, and put sort of big money behind it and changed things up a bit. So, this, was, uh, this distillery has been operating in its current form uh, for quite some time, 1949. But um, it, it, the actual sort of company that owns it has been around a lot longer. Um, I can say the name of that company because it's not telling the name of this distillery. It is uh, Angostura Group, who have been around for a lot longer than 1949. But they um, they they came in uh, in around um, I think around 49 to, to rejuvenate this distillery. But it was actually a big investment firm that changed things up a lot in around 93, 94. So you're sort of tasting. I like to say uh, almost. Uh, without, and I'm also not saying the name of the distillery, but I'm, we're tasting almost pre-Angostura Angostura in a way. So we're tasting sort of a piece of liquid history right here, which is very cool. If you like, think most rum, and I mean most rum on the market, is either unaged, one, two, three years of age, very, very young market for rum. As in like rum is generally not very old spirit. Same could be said about American bourbon and rye. Most of it is, most American bourbons are bottled around four or five years. Um, so... Um, <laughs> Yes, there you go. That's, yes, the, that's the, the point you're that's making. The, that's one of the yeah. things. Sorry, I couldn't say that comment. This is uncharacteristically old for rum. No, yes, it is very uncharacteristically old. It's a refill barrel that has been sitting, slumbering away since 1991. So we've gone from a 21-year-old peated whiskey to a 26-year-old rum tonight, which is unbelievable. And, and this, this, is, this is where I, I get a bit cocky and I think, you know, there are some members who looked at the opportunity to participate in tonight's thing and think, should I, should I join in this virtual? Should I buy the pack? And they yeah. say no. And I no, think, no. do you realise you just passed up a 21-year-old distillery 29, 29 and a 26-year-old rum? Yeah. Uh, oh, man. And I think the name on this one is very apt. I think Three Spice Creme Brulee is a lovely name for it. I think it's really apt. It's got that creme brulee notebook with lots of spices underneath it. If you like your rums, you're going to love this, even if you're not a big rum drinker. I'd almost call this a whiskey drinker's rum in some ways. Oh, uh, there's a bit of discussion taking place here on the Facebook stream about uh, non-whiskey versus non-scotch in those early society ones. But I'll tell you, what, there was no problem selling the non-scotch whiskey. I remember the very first time we had... Um, a distillery 120 oh, uh, yeah. in in a set of tasting in Sydney, and we only had 24 bottles for the entire country, and uh, that disappeared like that at one tasting event in Sydney. Um, so the Japanese stuff disappeared very quickly mm. once people tasted it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. The same could be said about some of the 132s we had through. Indeed, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And 124s and 119s. Keep and going, yeah. 130, yeah. 131. And I'll tell you what, it's the same thing that's going to happen with the, the one th one four X's to come. Yeah. In the yeah. 140s, there's uh, yeah. well, there's some exciting stuff coming in the pipeline. There really is. Mm. It's exciting.
It wasn't innovating. You know, also, that's the thing. I, I love that story about when we, when the society first bottled Japanese whiskey, members actively tore up their membership yeah, cards. That's right. Okay. <laughs> this is back when the membership cards were paper. They were sort of like bits of paper that you kept in your wallet. They hadn't migrated to the nice cards we have now, but it was they tore them up and um, returned them to the vaults. Yes. Because it was uh, the Scotch whiskey. Uh, Sacrilege. Sacrilege. The Scotch Malt Whiskey Society should not be bottling Japanese whiskey. And there was a letter that was published in the newsletter at the time uh, explaining as such what would happen if BMWs were made in India. Well, guess what? They mostly are anyway. But it, it's now it's it's a different world, I guess. Let's um, grab some comments, get into the last few questions of the quiz. There's a great comment from him that you might want to bring up. Yep, here we go. It's quite interesting. The older arms that I've had before have hit me in the face with their tannins, really strong and woody. This one has managed to keep its lightness very nice. Yeah, it's, it's a very elegant rum, isn't it? Well, it's a refill barrel. So for whatever that means, I guess you're not going to get an awful lump, amount of tannins coming through. Yes, hell of it's proof well. It's the power of the sugar cane, isn't it? 61.3%. Well, I prob probably went into barrel at about 80%. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The last operating distillery in Trinidad these days after Coroni closed its doors in 01, 03, 01, somewhere around 01 I'm going to go with. Someone's going to correct me. What year did Coroni close? I think it was 03, but it was... um. Yeah, this is the last operating now it's pretty much they handle all those operations. Interesting also distilled on the 31st of December, New Year's Eve. Yeah, wow, they were mm. just working hard. Yeah. Probably at 11.59 p.m. as well. Mm. <laughs> um, I love the nail polish slash acetone notes you get from good rum. Yeah, that agricole note, that sort of acetone agricole note. Isn't it funny if you find acetone in, in a scotch, it's a, it's a fault, and you find fault, it yeah. in a rum and it's suddenly it's a, a feature. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If I know a rum and I get if if I know a rum and like and I get immediate like white sugar like sugar 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 notes I'm like that's a flaw that's, mm. a, that's a rum where heaps of sugar's been added it's a poor spirit it's a cheap spirit mostly you know sort of CSL kind of added kind of rums they're not they're not much bugger, bugger all cast uh, maturation if any if any yeah yeah, yeah. Be unaged with, with sugar added that's not the kind of rum I enjoy but each to their own this rum is delicious thank you James and. Uh, Hashtag team refill. That's the one, Rob. And uh, liquid dessert. Yeah, there we go. Did James say that? Yeah. Yeah, good call. So, it is, and, and, and that's why we put it fifth in the lineup. It is, it is a dessert dram. It is a dessert dram indeed. Now, I gave you a clue before if you've been paying attention as to the answer to the next question, but here we go. What year was Angostura founded? I gave you a big clue when we're talking about this rum just no more than three minutes ago. So mm. there you go. So that's question nine on our quiz tonight. What year is Angostura founded? It's changing in the glass. I've not. I was added, about to say it's complex, yeah, isn't it? I've, I've not added any water, but I'll give it. I don't. I don't. Okay, I'm I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna give it a go. All right. I don't, I don't actually, go just as a rule of thumb, actually, my oh my little rule of thumb, uh, I don't. I don't generally add water to non-whiskey. I don't generally add water to rum, cognac, armagnac. I, I don't. I don't find it ever improves it. Um, I imagine a cognac and armagnac would fall apart very quickly. Very, yeah, yeah. especially armagnac. I mean, mm. even, even high-proof armagnac falls apart very quickly. Yeah, which is an anomaly within itself, actually. Some of the A5s we've had have been very high proof, but uh, generally because of being a single distilled spirit, armagnac. It's. I found some cognacs actually fall apart. Even just by themselves without water. <laughs> a bit of time in glass. <laughs> uh, Certainly some of the, uh, the the crappy VSOPs and oh, even, the, even yeah. the young XOs. But yeah. You know what? That's actually it's come, it's actually caramelised. It's like caramel slice now with a bit of water. There is some caramel there. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not ruined. It. It's not ruined. It. There's a there's a slight hint of cola syrup in that for me as well. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Hmm. Lovely. Question nine, what year was Angostura founded? Now your options on your multiple choice there are 2002, 1944, 1949, and 1824. There are your four options there, 2002, 1944, 1949, and 1824. Pop your answer in, and then we'll get to the last question in just a moment. It's funny how most people associate that brand name with the bitters. Yeah. It's about yeah. the only time you see it, isn't it? That's so, right, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, they don't associate it with um, Appleton Estate. They don't yeah. associate it with all yeah. the other great stuff they make. Mm. But still, I um, yeah, it's not um, yeah. 
Righto, James. Fair enough. <laughs> Someone's getting getting ahead of themselves, are they? Guessed what the last question was and submitted early. It was close. Got four right. You know what? Maybe, maybe did you get the last one right, James? I'd love to know if you get the last one right because that's the uh, hmm, see how we go. Hmm. Well, may as well get on to the last question then, uh, Andrew. Which of the following has the society never officially bottled? Is there any trick with the word officially in that sentence? You, we've, it's never been offered up to members. It's never been offered. Okay, yeah. right. So we might as well just say, which of the following has the society never bottled? Yeah, okay, we can take the word officially out. Okay. Yeah. Which of the following has the society never bottled? And you've got options such as? The, answer, the, the options are, and there's a lot of them, gin, rum, whiskey liqueur, blended scotch whiskey, blended malt whiskey, bourbon, rye, grain whiskey, and armagnac. So you've got nine options there and only one correct answer. So we had to throw a bit of a curveball at the end here. Which of the following, which of those has never been bottled by the society? Great question. Mm, that's not bad. Mm. It's one of those ones, it's well known to those who know it well. Yeah. And, and if you're new to the society, you'd probably... Uh, it's a tricky one, maybe. You, 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 you might want to tick four or five boxes there. <laughs> that's okay. As you can see, it's not multiple choice. It's box ticking, but yeah. which of the following has never been bottled by the society? Uh, James has just advised that he did get the last one right. Okay. As long as you don't say what the, uh, the answer is. Uh, well, hang on. He said he also guessed the question backwards, so he got it wrong six times. <laughs> <laughs> I think they call that full disclosure, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Points are trying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. What a lovely drop. Yeah, that was lovely. That was a good lineup. I really enjoyed the progression of that. And I think that's something that I don't know members take that for granted or appreciate it. But um, when you're planning a tasting, and I know a lot of people love to do tastings at home now, they invite their friends around or they form their own little suburban club and put a lineup together. A lot of thought, when you, particularly when you're featuring five whiskies, a lot of thought needs to go into the selection and the chemistry of those oh of those five spirits. Mm. Uh, I say five whiskies, even though one of them is not tonight. Um, you've really got to balance that. And, of course, when we're putting together our virtual tastings and when, when we're putting together a real face-to-face -face tasting for, for, for members, you really want to get that diversity of flavour profiles, of age, of cast type influence, of geography. I'm a big believer in geography. You know, Scotland's a small country, but there's distilleries scattered all around it. So I like to try and get a lineup that captures a lot of the different regions. I'm, I'm one of the last people who still believes in regionality, even though I'm wrong. And uh, that's what goes into thinking about a lineup. And I reckon those five drams tonight work together really well. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Mm. And I think I think the, the order we did the in was quite good as well, because that first one was like quite like light cream teas and spicy and a real sort of almost palate starter, if you like. Uh, the second one was quite charry and rich. The third one was distillery one, sherry whiskey from distillery one. Then of course we moved into Pete and then finished off with a bit of dessert. So I that's yeah, I, and I really appreciate the, um, just being able to do these tastings with you all and and being able to talk about a bit of whiskey, a bit of rum, and having a bit of fun with it and throwing a few questions in and seeing how we go. Yeah, agreed. No, nothing further to add. That was a that was a fun a fun experience and a good lineup. We obviously have some really exciting things coming up uh, to end the year. Uh, sounds funny saying that in October, but but the the, the it's a downhill run uh, from here. It's all happening. Um, with uh, obviously we've mentioned already tonight uh, the the big uh, November December outturn. There's events where we can have events and how we can have events. Uh, keep your eye on uh, on the website for that. Uh, you've probably got one or two things to say about that, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, most of them are actually live on the events page on the Society website right now. They went live at midday today. So even the um, the, the Sydney Whiskey Party, uh, our there's Adelaide, there's Wollongong, there's Canberra, there's, uh, there's a few more to be announced. Have we got Brisbane locked away yet? Not just yet. Not just Brisbane, yet. Brisbane, Hobart, keep you, and Perth, keep your... Um, Keep your eyes on the ball because we'll, we'll keep uh, we'll keep updating that. But I just want to say, um, first of all, I encourage as many Victorians as possible to jump in on the um, the whiskey and chocolate night because yes. I'm sorry we still can't really reliably schedule a Melbourne event just yet. So that's a big apology to all our Victorian members and also all of that, and also to Alex Morse who had really not much to do this year with us, unfortunately. But um, if you can <laughs> if you can keep a, if you can keep an eye on also. Um, the uh, 18th Amendment Ballarat Partner Bar is reopened and they are doing, I think, Thursday to Saturday. Best check their website and their socials for that. And Whiskey and Almond are starting to take bookings, I think, for their 5th to 6th of November onwards. Again, they've announced it on their website. Best check that out as well. Some of the partner bars in Victoria are starting to reopen. 
of course, our Sydney partner bars are open right now anyway. And um, still can't reliably do that, but we just want to, again, always extend our love to our Victorian members who are stuck in uh, who are stuck in a bit of a precarious state as they have been for the last six months or so. And um, we... Enjoy. Yeah, and, and, and we apologise we can't do more, but there's nothing worse than scheduling an event, taking bookings and then having to cancel, uh, which is the risk. Yeah. So we have to tread very carefully in that regard. Yeah, and we, and we want the safest for our community, obviously. Of course. So it's, just, yeah. 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 It's, not, it's not worth trying to do that right now. Um, so that was that was all we wanted to say right now about all of that. And, of course, like I said, mark your diaries, 13th of November for the double outturn. November, December is a double issue, so you'll see there's lots going on in that outturn. Andrew and I and Susie and Tam, the whole team that puts all this together, and we've just put the wraps on it. It's going to the printers on Monday. We're very excited, and we'll start. you'll start seeing some previews, extra previews about it in the week to come both in your inbox and on your socials and everywhere you like to look. But but it's more than an outturn. Uh, it, it's, it's a magazine, uh, effectively. Yeah, there's there's, there's some fantastic yeah. articles in there, some some long-form stuff, more than just the sort of little columns we, we, we often contribute. So uh, some fantastic reading. Um, so, yeah, look look forward to that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Rob says, um, start with the 29, the Davis Way hashtag palette of steel. Yes, that's a call out to Jay Davis, who does have indeed a palette that's, of steel. That's also, uh, well, in Sydney, we call that the Dick Bradley method. The Dick Bradley, yeah. <laughs> the Dick Bradley palette of steel yes, method. Yes, yes. Yes, and um, yeah, so so great. And um, really exciting, um, super tasting. Thank you, James. Thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight. Uh, we'll announce the winner of the quiz uh, on Monday. We want to give people who have got the pack, who haven't had a chance to tune in live tonight, to perhaps do, do it with us. Uh, over the weekend, maybe someone does get a perfect score. We'll see how we go. We'll work it out. Don't worry, there'll be something good for everyone who's, who's won, who's got the, the closest to the, the right answers. Thank you, Andrew, again. Thank you, Matt, again. It's been a pleasure drinking with you. Boom. And we'll see you all um, at our... Have a fantastic weekend. And for those who care about uh, either of the two codes, may your footy team do well. <laughs> may your footy team do re remarkably. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you.